Hey there everyone, my name is Louis and it's my mission to aid your awakening. And in today's video, I'm going to discuss why you need to take action and why that action that you plan on taking does not need to be perfect, it doesn't need to be calculated, you don't have to go on some huge fact-finding mission, you just have to act. And acting is the way into proactivity, it's the way of getting out of the worst state, which is reaction. You don't want to be in reaction, guys. You want to be in a state of action so that you can be fulfilled, go out, achieve what you want, and be in that state of being also. Action and being are the two states you want to evolve around in this lifetime. And in this video, I'm going to explain how it all starts, how all your dreams, everything you want to achieve, all begin with taking that leap forward, embracing imperfect action. Why you need to get on the path of imperfect action right now. Let's go. So guys, I've heard quotes about this in the past and I think it's absolutely true. The only way you're going to do anything is through imperfect action. The reason, the number one reason that could be holding a lot of you guys back is that you have this idea of how something should be and there's the gap between that idea in your mind and what, how you fear the actual action may take. I'm going to say lower your expectations in your mind. I'm going to say jump in, embrace imperfection because, and I strongly believe this, 99% of the idea of per perfection. 99% of what we perceive to be perfection is in fact only a part of the mind. I believe perfection is only a thing of the mind and that actually in reality there is no such single definition of perfection. To, per to everyone perfection is in fact unachievable one in reality because nothing can ever, f what you perceive to be perfect in your mind can never manifest as reality. You, it's more of an emotion you strive towards, but it can't be manifested, perfection. You may have, I think it's more of an emotion, since people find things that are perfect in others, oh, he's the perfect person, she's the perfect partner, say, but they're only perfect because of that emotion that we've been given. It's because it's more of an emotional sense than actually to do anything to do with reality. So that's one thing. The other thing is that Perfection is in the eye of the beholder. What we regard as perfect in one person can be completely different in something else. But we're shown standards of beauty that are often unrealistic. That's why people are photoshopped in pictures. This is to create the allure of perception. It's a facade that can never be reached. So what's stopping you is perhaps trying to also replicate this facade, maybe like in a film. Now I'm here to talk about why imperfect action, in one sense, is needed. How I took my first steps on YouTube through imperfect action. I have this idea in my head and I still do of how I want things to go one day and when I first recorded my video and I looked back at it, me in the damp forest on my phone, not really able to deliver the message like I thought or I hoped I could, doing other things, you know, being busy with my body, which I still do. It's imperfect but I knew that was something that was better than being in reaction, that was better. Anything is better than just having the ideas in my head. It's not going to reach the ideas in my head but having that along with the ideas, the actual piece of something, a pr evidence that I've taken action as perfect, as imperfect as it can be, is preferable to just it being perfect and only being in my head. So it stops me all the time. The idea that I'm restricted because of the idea of perfection. So my head is actually restricting me from taking real life action. It's not just with YouTube. It's not just on some days I don't feel good. Hence, I don't think I'll be able to deliver to the standard that I have in my mind. Hence, I'm worried or in a, the thought of scarcity that if I use up this video idea, I won't be able to use it on a day where I'm feeling better. But that's the idea of scarcity. I should be in the idea of abundance that I speak on this idea, I release the idea, and then another one will come, which it will. Another one will come. And how many times where I th can't think of any videos, but until I make a few, then more ideas come. This is how the universe supports you. You take the action, then you trust your instincts will kick in. And I'm going to get back onto that later, because that's really important. For anyone like me who likes to be in control of everything, this has been a problem throughout my life. I love to be in control of a situation. I, love, I want the situation to go the way I want it to go, or I'll go along with it, but I'll be a bit reluctant. I won't really go with it fully, because it's not quite the way I want it to be. And then when my vision doesn't isn't reaching it, 
I feel bad, but that's actually just suffocating life. And the reason that is, if you listen to the talk Alan Watts did once, a famous talk, he said, we all wish, for some reason, us as human beings all wish we could be gods. Yet, yeah, but if we were actually gods, maybe we'd live all the fantasies we'd ever dreamed of, right? We'd have all these people around that we'd want. We'd have this infinite amount of money, this power. We could fly, we could do all these things. But eventually, it's like playing a video game on god mode. You are in god mode. It's like playing a video game on the, be on the easiest level. It's fun for a bit, but then it quickly becomes boring because there's no challenge. Because we expect everything. We already know how everything's going to go. There's no mystery. And this mystery of life and these challenges that we face along the way are what give us, make us alive. And he said, eventually, if we were all gods, we'd wish, or uh, maybe there'd be some other gods I can sort of challenge, or we'd wish, or uh, maybe take away a few of my powers so I, could, I was a bit restricted and I could do this and that. And then you get bored of that again. He said, actually, take me back to maybe a more slightly powerful human, but you'd still already sampled the easy life. You already had all these experiences. So they actually... Keep me back as a person. Give me some challenges. But what we don't know is, this is what our souls have chosen, right? Our souls have chosen to descend into, these, into this 3D reality, initially 3D, right, at the way we were born, and has chose to incarnate as these people. You're here to do something on this earth, to raise the frequency, I believe, anyway, to raise the frequency of this planet. And it's our job to wake up in this lifetime that we've chosen, this challenge that we've chosen. We didn't choose to have it easy. Maybe, you know, you know, where we came from before this was all easy and we've chosen this challenge, just like the Alan Watts story about us being gods, but then choosing to return to face a challenge, to face something that is unexpected. And with imperfect action, you must go in and take action on whatever you want to achieve, be it being more sociable. This is what I did when I was at university. I didn't think I was good enough talking to strangers on nights out, I didn't think I was good enough, but I was too shy talking to girls, felt like I always needed to have alcohol or something else. So I started going to the clubs week after week, completely sober. I went to the clubs completely sober and I challenged myself to start talking to as many people as possible. So I went up to people, I was really hesitant. And I went in, I didn't have a preloaded idea of what I'd say, I didn't have a story ready to go. I knew that the best way, the most real way I could connect with someone was having nothing prepared and letting my intuitiveness, which was growing, guys, everyone on this experience, their intuition is growing. I was, I was hoping that I'd go in and just find the things to say. And initially, I'd be so focused on myself, be so stuck in my head, I couldn't even say a proper sentence. Of, uh, hey, hey, uh, and that'd be it. They'd be like, what is this weirdo? You know, <laughs> I can't even speak. But I keep doing it, and you keep doing it. Eventually, you hit a flow state, eventually, because you're hitting on your ego again and again and again. Your ego saying, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. You're pushing, 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 taking imperfect action from incredibly imperfect to what later on feels damn close to perfect because you're very sharp, because you've practiced, because you've got out of your comfort zone. You've left the area of protection, which most people are spending their lives in, this area of protection, egoic protection, not wanting to risk, you know, some damage, changing someone's opinion of them. You get outside that, you've already put yourself out there, you've already been rejected several times. And then you can think of what to say immediately and it comes and you have imperfect action changes into near perfect action. You feel amazing. It's so rewarding pushing yourself outside your comfort zone. You'll never feel that sense of reward if you remain in your comfort zone. If you say you'll only take action when it feels right, when it feels perfect, then the action itself is not rewarding because it doesn't feel like a challenge. And just like if you were God, if you were taking perfect actions all the time, you'd get bored and you'd want to return to where you face a challenge. So this is what I'm trying to say how imperfect, imperfect action is. And we don't trust the fact that we can take imperfect action. We feel like we need everything risk calculated and what's the right technique, what's the right way of doing it, how is the right way to interpret it. We're so in our heads that we suffocate life itself. And life itself is that emerging intuition. Life itself is that tapping into instincts. Our instinctual knowledge goes beyond what we've learned you know, for a few years of our lives maybe through books, through videos, through what courses, whatever else. Our instinctual knowledge goes back thousands of years. Tap into that, it's the silence. That's your instinctual knowledge. I saw a video earlier where a guy was talking about imperfect action and the fact if someone threw a punch, our instincts through thousands of years of conditioning, of survival, whatever it may be, we'd instantly be able to block ourselves. That's a natural instinctual move. Whereas if someone were to say, what's the best way to defend yourself? You then 
forget about the instinct, start talking to the head and think, maybe I go like this, maybe when I'm in karate, it's all like this position, maybe you do the boxing. Instead of just doing the natural move, that would maybe be the correct for that situation, the instinctual knowledge. You're thinking about the small time, the part time, what's gone on during your lifetime. When deep down your intuition has so much more knowledge that we can't even comprehend. So go into that. Don't have an agenda. Go into it. Be free of the outcome. Whatever this imperfect action can be, talking on stage, maybe nothing to do with social, maybe writing a book, writing a poem. You're not, in, you're not bringing in the head. You're merely listening. You're silencing the mind, listening to the intuition. And this is what's growing for us. We're waking up. Our, my intuition has grown massively. I now can feel the energies when I walk into a room. I now instinctually know what's right, what's wrong. I now, I now instantly know if it's, what kind of situation I want this to be. I instantly know what kind of person I feel I can trust or not. It's about listening to yourself because this is the knowledge from, like I said, long ago, which is starting to come through. Spiritual wisdom. So take the spiritual perspective. Don't look at it as, oh, I wish I could do this, I wish it was easier. Embrace the challenge because it gives you the opportunity to take imperfect action. And this idea of the intuition having all this intelligence, if you read the book Blink by Malcolm Gladwell, halfway through at the moment, I haven't quite finished it, but he discusses this. This natural intelligence, you can read. It, you can read how well a marriage is going due to the, to the couple's body language with each other, the way they sort of react, the minuscule unconscious reactions they have when they ask each other pressurizing questions. That reveals so much. It's these ins instincts that you have that really show the knowledge, the knowledge beyond what our egoic mind can often bring up or reoccurringly bring up during the course of the day. And in my view, when I started YouTube, I thought the only thing worse would be not doing anything at all. I said, I could really embarrass myself. I could make a complete hash of this, but you know, I have a right positive intention. I want to help people. And I'm going to go for it. And yeah, it was, it's a challenge. And yeah, I was scared. But I thought the only thing worse is if I don't do it. And if I live in this regret. And if I just, you know, it just stays a dream in my mind. So guys, remember, perfectionism is the enemy. That's going to stop you. Take it. The thought may be arising in your mind. That's fantastic. If you think it, it can happen. Be with the thought. But then take the imperfect action. And be willing to embrace whatever you've done. Because it is action. It's better than just it being in your mind, okay? And remember, you can trust these instincts. Be free of the outcome. I think that's the most important thing about if you want to be a real, if you want to come across authentically, you have to just do it and forget about the outcome. Forget about how it can be perceived. Forget about the results, happens, good or bad. You're doing it for the sake of doing the action because you know it's the right thing to do. And that is real, that is genuine. And guys, that's why you need to see imperfect action to achieve your goals so that we can get blessings, blessings, blessings. And with that, guys, I'll be out. Peace and love. Bye-bye.